Good evening, everyone. Welcome to Diksha Ilani. With great joy and immense pleasure, I extend my warm welcome to all dignitaries, guests, and delegates present here for Dr. Sudhir Raj N Memorial Free Webinar Series, organized by Diksha Ilani in association with Ayurveda College Coimbatore under the banner of Azadi Ka Amrit Mahotsav. In today's session, we are all discussing about Diksha Ayurveda by Dr. Ankita Vashisht. Now, before starting the session, I would like to go through a few of the basic instructions to be followed throughout the session. For an uninterrupted class session, use a laptop with high-speed internet connection. Please make sure your microphone is on mute to have a disturbance-free session. In case of any disruption, please check your internet connection first. And if the problem is with our network connection, kindly raise the issue in the chat box. Filling your full name to be displayed is appreciated. Any questions can be raised or posted in the chat box and questions raised in the chat box will be addressed at the end of the session. Next, I would like to invite Dr. Sarika Ma'am, Assistant Professor, Department of Shalya Tantra, Ayurveda College, Coimbatore, to extend the welcome address. Over to you, ma'am. Thank you. Namaste. Humble pranams to the gathering. On behalf of Ayurveda College, Coimbatore and Deeksha e-learning, it's my honor to extend a welcome address for today's session conducted in the name of Dr. Sudhiraj N. Memorial under the banner of Azadika Amrit Mahotsav. I extend my warm welcome to our today's speaker, Dr. Angita Vasisht. Ma'am is currently working as an assistant professor of Divya Jyoti Ayurvedic Medical College and Hospital, Uttar Pradesh. With heartfelt gratitude, I welcome Ma'am to, to take us deep into the topic of Riksha Ayurveda. Last but not the least, I welcome all my colleagues, practitioners, and Ayurvedic students all around the globe to today's session. Welcome one and all. Thank you. Uh, thank you, ma'am. Uh, it is a great pleasure for me to introduce our guest speaker, Dr. Ankita Vashisht, ma'am, to this platform. Dr. Ankita Vashisht, ma'am, is currently working as an assistant professor in the Department of Dravya Guna at Divya Jyoti Ayurvedic Medical College and Hospital, Uttar Pradesh. Ma'am has graduated from Grav Brahman Ayurvedic College, Rotak in the year 2013 and degree in hospital administration from Mahatma Gandhi University, Meghalaya. Post-graduation from Parul Ayurveda uh, University, Gujarat, and she's currently pursuing her PhD in Dravya Guna. She has worked as an assistant professor uh, at Garya Ayurveda Medical College, Rajkot, and uh, at SKS Ayurveda College and Hospital at Madhura. We are extremely privileged to have you here in, the, in, the, in this platform, ma'am. Now, without any further delay, let me hand over the session to ma'am. Over to you, ma'am. Yeah, thank you, uh, Shri Lakshmi, Dr. Shri Lakshmi, for like a very nice introduction. And uh, I want to say uh, sorry for the la last uh, whatever the happened just because my Wi-Fi is not working and my current born. So I want to say sorry from my like bottom of my heart. Or uh, this topic is something, it is very related. It is very uh, like uh, lovable for me or I can, you can say that is, it is like a, having a like a deep place in my heart because uh, I want to share some story regarding about this topic because everybody, you know, whenever I say that I've performed or I've done my MD uh, in this topic. So everybody's saying that, that, you know, whatever, you know, what you have seen like in three years, you have just only seen a, like a plants, you know, beach and all that thing. But there is a, some story regarding about this topic because when I was like, uh, went for a like MD in a Parul University. So I remember my guide used to force me, like my guy used to say to me, like go for like a clinical study, uh, like go for like a arm bath and take any medicine. And I was like uh, so admonent because I, I know that that I am a, like a Dravaguna scholar and I'm a Dravaguna student and I want to do something regarding about Dravaguna, which is good for Dravaguna and which is serious need to be like a, you know, having a like a, in a place of a Dravaguna field. So my co-guide, Dr. Satej Vanne, so I guess uh, I want to say he's the person that all the things Briksha Ayurveda is like happened because he has having a, some brief some are brilliant ideas regarding about the topic. And he's such a genuine person. He's such a good, uh, you know, uh, teacher in the field of Adraveguna. So he has introduced me some of the topics and go for this topic. So I have selected this topic because he has uh, told me regarding, you know, this, uh, there is a story regarding about this topic. He told me that his senior has worked in this topic in Kelly Belgaum. And right now, 
and he told me that he, you know he has taken his career into like a farming business you can say that uh, you know he's gone for a like a organic farming so and he told me that ankita do you know that how much is you know he is earning in a in a month or in a year he is actually earning more than a crore regard by taking this topic so it is like a very a uh, good topic regarding and it is a, like a you can take as a career option also if you have interested in a farming and all that thing so i just i want to give a like a brief knowledge regarding about that and you can uh, see me as a teach as a not a teacher as a learner because i'm just having a 3 plus years experience and plus i'm a phd scholar so you can take me as a student because whatever i know i want to give you like a brief knowledge regarding about this topic so i want to start my uh, presentation a brief review on vriksha ayurveda so what is vriksha ayurveda preserving the health of a healthy individual and treating the disease has been the aim of ayurveda equally important is the preservation and the growth of the plant kingdom for the benefit of the mankind the knowledge regarding plant includes deep understanding of the relationship of plant with other plants and animal soil moisture temperature and other geological phenomena approximately about 10000 different plant species are found in india out of which about 5000 are having a medicinal properties and about 2500 different plants have been used as food the proper documentation of the plant based pharmacopoeia was started around 3000 bc to 2000 bc in the atharv veda with information about 300 plants vriksha ayurveda a component of agni purana and ancient indian scripture is a dedicated text signifying the importance of agricultural science vriksha ayurveda means the science of plant life mainly dealing with the various species of trees and their healthy growth and their productivity what is vriksha ayurveda basically vriksha ayurveda is a book which you which can tell regarding about how you can maintain the plant growth how you can maintain that a seed should be like a proper cultivated how you can uh, go on for a like if your uh, you know if the soil is not good how you can go on for a like a farming and all so this is something uh, this book is related to regarding about uh, plant and their health a uh, vriksha ayurveda means the science of a plant life mainly dealing with various species of trees and their healthy growth and productivity it suggests the planting of trees is mean to attain the four components of life that is dharma artha kaam or moksha the holistic approach of the science enabled the enabled the proper cultivation and care needed for the growth of plant kingdom in vriksha ayurveda the cultivation of about 170 plant species are described including water management soil conservation fertilizer used to cultivate the plant and the various diseases affecting the plant and their treatment text there is a lot of like a uh, textbook written uh, regarding for uh, like a uh, vriksh ayurveda the various texts describing about vriksh ayurveda are that is uh, like a uh, upvand vinoda a chapter in the text charandar padati it deals with the glory of the tree selection of soils and classification so this jo uh, this book which is written by on the basis of vriksha ayurveda is kind of like a, is mainly describe the how the plant look like and what how you know from which plant which soil is needed and which soil is better for that plant and the classification of the soils and all the other things and they will be like a book brihat samhita book compiled by varamir in 5000 ad a 500 ad it discusses a topic like clouds indication of yield of crop from the blooming a certaining of the water in a dry region then there will be like a main book which is a main book of vriksha ayurveda and it is a like a author that that is book you know this book is correctly written by a surpala vriksha ayurveda of surpala it is a manuscript on horticulture and botany and botany wait a minute uh, preparation of different kind of menus explain the plant diseases and treatment this is a book which has to be read by everyone who have like done bms or who is a like a pg scholar or there you know because in this book you can see all the things regarding about that plant to have a like a vataj pittaj kapha disease and how you can uh, you know go for like a treatment and 
if you like uh, want to like cultivate one plant on a significant uh, on a significant soil you can go for like a this book krishi sukti it is a text on agriculture narrated by a sage kashyapa it contains a description of eatable and uneatable substances methodology of a paddy cultivation period of the work is considered to be the 8th and 9th century ad of this book then is, there will be like a book called as amar kosha it is a sanskrit lexicon of 6th century ad compiled by pandit amar simha chapters like a bhumi varga van aushadi varga give a comprehensive glimpse of the art of classification of soil land implement used etc then there will be like a book called as the krishi prasharha this book explains about agriculture depending on rainfall seed collection preservation and sowing then there will be like a kautilya arthashastra it enlists the function of the officer in charge of Uh, in charge of agriculture and his assistants, tax collection from the people based upon the agricultural output. Various texts like Dhanvantri Nigantu, Raj Nigantu, Bhav Prakash Nigantu also describe some aspects of Vriksha Ayurveda. Two books which are completely dedicated to Vriksha Ayurveda that is Vriksha Ayurveda by Shali Hotra and the second one is Vriksha Ayurveda by Surpal. Shali Hotra and Surpal they both are the authors of the Vriksha Ayurveda. then they will be like a first one is the vriksha ayurveda which is written by a shali hotra vriksha ayurveda written by shali hotra around in the time of like 400 bc this book is divided into 12 chapters it has like a 12 chapters in the first chapter of the book various types of land and soil are described that on which land on which particular drug you can cultivate this kind of like a brief knowledge on a first chapter later in the book the preservation care of seeds and its germination is mentioned then on second chapter or in the pre, on the like a later part of the book you can find that how you can preserve the seeds how you can take care of the seeds and how you can germinate by a different techniques they has to be like a mention in this book the method used for the irrigation of the plant amount of water needed for the proper growth of plant is explained that if you are cultivating some of the drugs how much water is needed for like a that bij it is mentioned clearly in this book the fertilizer called as a kulap jala was used for the cultivation of plants kulap jala is mainly a uh, describe about how much of water you can require for a, like a germination of a seed the method used to protect the plant and trees from extreme weather condition treatment of branches and root if affected by a disease growing different plant around dwelling places are written in this text if a if a plant if a tree is something diseased by uh, some of the disease you can find the some of the treatments which is available in this book right and if you want to like in if your seeds are going to be like if you want that your seeds going to be like large and everything basic necessity are involved in this book then there will be like a important uh, this is uh, this author is clearly mentioned and the some of the beautiful techniques for the germination for the preservation of the seeds this is a book which is written by a surpala vriksha ayurveda written by surpala in 1000 ad around time regarding about like 1000 ad this book regains importance till date as a book describes in detail about the cultivation and the preservation of the plant from its seed till its maturity you can find each and every chapter so briefly described that how you can preserve your seeds how you can take care of your seeds and how you can like from like starting like cultivating to or like a maturity how you can take care of your seeds and take care of your plant this book is completely describe about what the plant and how you can go for a like a uh, farming something it include 13 chapters the plant kingdom is classified into four types upon their morphology vanaspati droma lata gulma kunab jal what is kunab jal the menu prepared from the combination of a fat flesh of a boar mixed with water milk and stored underground is called as a kunap jala basically this is the process which is required and which is mainly described by the author surpala in many of the line if you want to like cultivate some of the drugs or some of the beja you can apply kunap jala 
so th this is the how you can prepare like a kunab jala this water was used for the irrigation of newly germinated seeds and helped in quicker growth of plants those farmers who need or those person who want like their seed to be like a germinated fastly and they they need to be like you know having a quicker growth of plants so this this process which is called as a kunab jal you can go for like a this rules of sowing seeds that how you can sow the seeds seeds should be smeared with cow dung and sprinkled with milk okay if you want to like uh, sow the seeds you have to like a uh, first apply the cow dung on a seed then after that you can apply uh, or sprinkle some cow milk then after that you can dry about for a 3 days then after that you can cultivate that seeds dry them again and later is smeared repeatedly with powder of vidanga mix with honey and then sown for a germination it is a second part dry them for like about 3 3 uh, 3 uh, days then after that you can apply the paste of a vidang and you can mix with a like honey and then you can like uh, go for like a germination process of planting pits about 1 hasta about 18 inches or 2 hasta about 36 inches in depth and width should be prepared if you want to like go for like a proper cultivation that kind of like a, a process it should be needed pits should be properly dried filled with cow bones cow dung and burnt some ashes Full of water should be sprinkled and fill the pit with good mud. Watering the plant. What is the basic necessity for watering the plant? The book mentioned about the time for watering the plant. Newly planted trees, both in morning and evening. If you have like a cultivated in a very uh, newly, uh, you know, new, if you have cultivated newly seeds, you can plant the trees in both morning and in both evening. For a, like a Hemant or Shishir Ritu. on alternate day on alternate days you can uh, uh, go for like a watering the plant in vasant ritu you have to watering the plant for a daily purpose in grishma ritu once in the morning and once in the afternoon in sharad ritu when there is no rainfall fill the circular ditch under tree with water increase in size and yield it means if you want to increase the size of vegetables fruit like orange mango pomegranate pomegranate etc process should be applied that you have to like uh, milk mix with a fertilizer of sesame remnants of meat and fish should be poured around the plant then after that your fruits like orange mango mango their uh, size will be increased disease affecting the plant the diseases affecting the plants can be grouped into exogenous and endogenous exogenous disease caused due to a worm infestation insect attack etc endogenous plants are also affected by a vata pitta kapha treatment also given in this book in worm infestation irrigate the plant with cold water for 7 days and apply cow dung mixed with water milk and kunab jala suffered by heat if your plant is suffered by like a extra uh, excess amount of a heat you can apply kunab jala with milk it should be mentioned if there is like a mention about regarding about a milk there has to be like a cow milk you cannot apply any other milk you have to take a cow milk if a plant dries due to a bad soil if the soil is not good and you have like basically cultivated your seeds you can use that you, you have to remove the soil and replace healthy soil and sprinkle with water or you can add some kunab jal also wound <coughs> to the trees apply the paste of a bark of a new growth which is called as a ficus bengalensis odumbar ficus glomerata cow dung honey and ghee which is has to be like mentioned over there is cow gritta go gritta burn treatment if a plant is burnt it can be treated with the application of mud and the paste of lotus for endogenous diseases if a plant is suffered from a vata disease uh what are the features how you can relate that that this plant has you know has a disease related to a vata the plants become lean deformed appearance of knots and globules on trunks or leaves and treatment how you can treat irrigation with flesh and a fat of animals along with kunab jala followed by a fumigation with neem leaves if a plant is suffered from a pitta dosha then there will be like a yellow discoloration of the leaves frequent shedding of the branches etc 
treatment, irrigation with decoction of the yasti madhu, madhu and a milk, mix, mix with honey, fumigation with honey and ghee to be affected part of a plant. And if a plant is suffered from a kapha dosha, branches and leaves become glossy. Treatment, applied decoction prepared from herbs like apamag, pipli. Major subjects brought under rich Ayurveda include bhumi nirupnan. You, it means that you can identify or classification of soil conservation. Basically, this is a subject which you can like see that what is the proper soil needed for a, like a proper plant. Second one is the bija prati vidhi. That is a technique how you can sow the plant. Then there is a padapa vipaksha method of preparation. Then there is a ropan vidhanam. That means a plantation technique. Then there is a nisation vidhi. This means that irrigation technique. Then there's a portion with it that how the plant requires special nutrition. If you want that your plant should be like germinated very well and it should have a, like a rasa godavire vipak in a proper amount. Dhruma reksha, conservation practices. Taru chikisa, treatment with biomedicine. Nivasa snana taru subha, ashubha lakshanama. Selection of plant for planting near the resident based on their god, good and a bad quality. Taru Mahima, Glory of Trees, Awareness Program. Upvan Kriya, Landscaping and Gardening. And then they will, the last one is Chitrik Karanama, Research on Plant Biotechnology. So this is the subject which is uh, included or which is highly uh, told by the author uh, in Vriksha Ayurveda book. Relevance of Vriksha Ayurveda. The ignorance of our ancient text is responsible for the degeneration of our agricultural practices. There is now a growing recognition of the need for incorporating the traditional system to meet the limitation of both modern medicine and agriculture. The availability of a quality medicinal herb with the desired pharmacological and biological markers has become a challenge due to a degradation of soil worldwide. The necessity of a controlled quality cultivation becomes significant in the sector of medicinal plants. Conclusion, uh, I want to say uh, some of the lines then after that, I can tell uh, some, uh, what is my thesis topic and how I performed. Owing to the generation of a greater interest and increased demand toward the natural and traditional holistic system of healing in recent times, the traditional method have no adverse effect, no adverse side effect on the environment. It is a juncture to develop appropriate methodology of cultivation and harvesting of medicine plant by integrating the knowledge of traditional and contemporary sciences, which consequently aid in sustainable deliverance of quality assured plant drugs, moreover their conservation. And I rest my all PPT in the, by the conclusion. And I want to brief uh, knowledge regarding about my topic and how I performed my topic. My topic is related regarding about, I have taken two drugs, which is called as Ashoka and Gambari. And uh, I've taken four groups. Uh, one group in which I have not added anything. In second group, I have taken one person H2SO4. And in third group, I have taken like Ashoka and Gambari seeds, 50-50 seeds of Ashoka and Gambari and applied uh, Haridra, Haridra and garlic. And then after that, I sprinkled with a cow milk and dried for a three days. Then after uh, when I have went for a germination. Then on a fourth group, I have taken a, like a Vidanga and Haridra. And then after that, I have applied a paste of a Vidang and Haridra. Then I have applied a paste coat of cow dung, then sprinkled with a cow milk, and then, a, uh, you know, dry in a, like a sun for a three days. And then after that, I went for a germination. I have taken uh, four groups and I went for study. And in four or five groups, what I've seen that in the fourth group, uh, their seed has a quicker germination rate. And I have like a, my thesis uh, right now, I have uh, given for a, like a, for a uh, book uh, publishing because four group, I have seen that, that their seed is germination faster. And I have seen that, that how much uh, a germination uh, faster by doing this process. So before, uh, before concluding all the things, I want to say that many of the things on many of the places on many of the, in the Google, you will found if you have, if somebody is going for an MD and if somebody is going for a PhD, right? I'm going for a PhD and I've taken a Gunja. And in Gunja, why I've taken that? Because Gunja, according to a Delhi side and according to a Delhi 
Delhi, uh, Delhi uh, government that Gunja is to be like a uh, endangered, right? And we have to like uh, save Gunja, so that I have taken a Gunja. But they are using a uh, brick Ayurveda techniques. They are going going for a, like a brick Ayurveda technique for the germination of the endangered species. But many of the book, many of the site, or many of the everything. Uh, Google, you can go for like information that some of the drugs, they are like uh, endangered, they are extinct, you know, some of the drugs, they become like disappear. But you can preserve all the drugs by using the, uh, by using the techniques, which is given by, which is given on this book. This book should be uh, readily acceptable by all the, uh, all the uh, PG scholars, and it should be read by every PG scholar that what, that what I uh, feel, because uh, before, uh, you know, before telling me, uh, you know, I want to say one thing, when I've completed my PMS, I don't have knowledge regarding about what is Riksha Ayurveda. But when I came to my MD and I went for a, like my synopsis, I came to know that Riksha Ayurveda is such a book in which uh, you can go for like a very limitation things, very limit things. I remember one of my like teacher is used to say, ma'am, you have only 60 pages of thesis. How are how you can, you know, how your thesis is going to be passed, right? But this topic is highly appreciable, is highly appreciated by each one of my teacher. And in fact, one of the teacher, which is right now, he's working in a Jamnagar. And he told me, go for like a, this study, because this study is not known by many person. And this is something which is need to be, need to be highlighted because this is a topic. If you're, uh, this is a topic you can increase your knowledge and this is a topic you can take your as a you know you can take your you you can take this topic as your uh, as your like occupation also by side by side occupation also and trust me like those persons who have not like a uh, gone for a bms and those who are not uh, like a uh, from a uh, like a ayurveda field they are applying this techniques and they are uh, earning more than a more than a lakh Per month, because as I was like going for a, like a lot of topics regarding about my PhD, I found that many of the person they went for a, some techniques which is available on on a rich Ayurveda book, and they went for it, and they are like earning in it. So why not Ayurveda students? That's why I've taken this topic, and uh, I rest my like presentation. You can uh, start. Thank you, ma'am. It was really a very wonderful session. And now the session is open for discussion. I request the participants to put their question in the chat box so it can be discussed. Participants with any questions are requested to post their question in the chat box so it can be discussed with ma'am. Is there any question, uh, Dr. Shri Lakshmi? Uh, no, ma'am. There's no questions today. There's no question. So uh, we can like end up here. Yes, ma'am. Uh, so shall I conclude, ma'am? Yeah. Okay. Thank you, ma'am. It was really a very wonderful session. And thank you, participants, for joining us today. I'm looking forward to seeing you all in the upcoming sessions. Once again, thank you, ma'am, for sharing your valuable time with us. And uh, we sure have a great evening. Yeah. I want to uh, conclude one of the things. Thank you. Yes, ma'am. Thank you, uh, Diksha e-learning platform for giving me like a platform for like a, for having a like whatever I have a knowledge to share with you guys. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. And you are doing a, a brilliant work and keep it doing your work, please. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you for the appreciation.